Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. Today we discuss on normal distribution. I told you that normal distribution will play a big role while analyzing data and you will see later on that um, many a times assumption of normality is a very, very important one. What does it mean that the data? coming from a normal population. So, around half an hour of time today, we will discuss in detail what is normal distribution and how to use normal distribution from statistical table point of view and given a data, how do we know that the data will follow normal distribution with some plots. So, that means, you will know the basics of normal distribution, then, then a second one is that standard normal distribution and finally, normal probability plots. Okay. So, again these lecture with all those lectures mostly that Montgomery and his two books, Design Analysis of Experiment and Engineering Statistics books, we have developed this and this I will explain. Okay. So, <coughs> let y is the random variable of interest. y is the random variable of interest and let y follows normal distribution. And let that the mean of population, mean of population for y equal to mu and standard deviation is deviation equal to sigma. And then we can write that y is normally distributed with parameter mu and variance mean mu and variance sigma square. If I say y is normally distributed immediately you will be interested to know what is the probability density function of y because y is continuous variable and normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution. So, if it y is discrete variable you cannot use this normal distribution for y. There are certain transformation after that you can use normal distribution, but for the time being you understand that normal distribution is a continuous distribution, why the, the variable of interest must be continuous and we are assuming that y is continuous and y follows normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma and we are writing, we, we are denoting y in this manner. Then the probability density function p d f of y will be f y which is 1 by root over 2 pi sigma square within bracket e to the power minus half y minus mu by sigma to the power square. And here y range from minus infinite to plus infinity. What is this? This is the p d f probability density function of y and this is normal probability density function. 
Okay. And if you plot, your plot will be like this, this will be mu and this side and this side like this, this side, this side minus infinite to plus infinite, it must be greater than 0 or other way I can say sigma must be greater than 0, sigma is not 0. <laughs> Now, see the plot. This is a normal probability plot. Here interestingly, um, you see that where it is a symmetric one first of all. That means, the from the middle point left side and right side the shape is same and at, at uh, if you go away from the mean value uh, that the height is also same. If you go sigma uh, away from mean both side height will be same the density will be same. So, this is a symmetric one and you see that there are different colors color zone one is minus mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma this is known as one sigma range means mu minus one sigma mu plus one sigma. Second one is mu minus 2 sigma mu plus 2 sigma 2 sigma range. Third one is mu minus 3 sigma mu plus 3 sigma range. So, effectively then if I cal if I say that what is the spread from mu plus sigma to mu minus sigma although we say that I am saying on my one sigma range, but effectively plus 1 sigma minus this side 1 sigma is 2 sigma. Then this one is 4 sigma the range is 4 sigma mu plus minus 2 sigma and this is mu plus minus 3 sigma range is 3 6 sigma. This <coughs> now, <coughs> now there are certain other values given in the figure 68 percent, 95 percent and 97 99.7 percent what does it mean? It means that if you if you take the range mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma then the probability is 0 0.68, 0 0.6827. If you take mu minus 2 to mu plus 2 sigma, probability is 95.45 percent or 0 0.9545 percent, and in 3 sigma, uh, 0 0.9973 percent. So, other way, other word, I, we can say approximately 68 percent observations falls within plus minus mu plus minus 1 sigma. Approximately 95 observations falls within mu plus minus 2 sigma. Effectively 99.7 percent observation fall mu plus minus 3 sigma. Okay. So, this is this is basically the way the normal distribution uh, figure is also interpreted. Okay. So, another th uh, thing you can see that from the symmetry probability x greater than mu or equal to probability x less than mu also equal to 0.5 means from this side 0.5 mu left side 0.5 mu right side also 0.5. Probability function increases if x moves from this side to that side. Now, here we are using f x and x and you can use y if you, you your random variable is y then here the way I have written here y. So, if it is y only that in place of x you write y here. So, that it will be y it will be y it will be y. So, in general uh, in most of the books they start when start random variable they write x is the random variable, but uh, from our side as we are more interested in the response variable which is an effect variable we use the notation y and all through in the DOE class all the classes we will be using y for response variable. Okay. Now, now another important concept is that is standard normal distribution you have seen normal distribution, but standard normal distribution. For example, suppose I have three process, process 1, 
process 2, process 3. And everywhere it is basically normally with mu 1 and sigma 1 square, this also normally distributed with mu 2 sigma 2 square, this normally distributed mu 3 sigma 3 square. Let it be like this. So, then if I want to, if I draw, I will draw like this, maybe this is my mu 1, this is my mu 2 and this may be mu 3. And it can be suppose sigma 1, sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 equal to sigma 3, let it be, it may not be, let it be. So, in that case you can plot like this. Okay. So, mu this is for process 1, this is for process 2, this is for process 3. So, <coughs> that means for 3 process 3 different normal distribution. Suppose, I want to <coughs> if I want to compare you have to do like this, but I want to I want to get something which will be which will be used irrespective of which process it is coming from. Means for this process, for this process, for all those processes, I will be able to use that normal distribution. I want to standardize it, that is what is known as standardization. Irrespective of which population, normal population we are talking about, their mean standard deviation that may vary, but I want a I want to convert them to a standard one, that is known as standard normal. Now, if in this particular case, if sigma 1 not equal to sigma 2 not equal to sigma 3, then what may happen? This may be your sigma 1, but sigma 2 may be something like this and sigma 3 may be something like this. Okay. So, that means not only the your uh, that mean value, but the standard deviation also uh, differing. So, that means you have if there are in uh, k number of uh, process k number of such distribution will be there. So, it, you, you, you want to make them standard all bring together. So, this is possible if you do some kind of normalization or other way I can say standardization. What is the standardization? Suppose, if I create a another variable which is y minus mu by sigma if if y is my random variable if x is my random variable then you can say x minus mu by sigma obviously mu and sigma are the mean and standard deviation in this case in this case what will happen then when you are subtracting the mean from the random value and then dividing by the standard deviation so, you are getting instead of y, you are creating another variable called z, which is known as known as standardized variable. Now, if my y p d f is f y is 1 by root over 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus half y minus mu by sigma square, or if you use x then you will write the same manner 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus of x minus mu by sigma square. Please keep in mind that sigma this sigma and mu and this sigma mu are not same. This is for y, this is for x. If there are different very random variable, different mu sigma. Just for the sake of simplicity, I am not giving any other notation like mu x sigma x, it can be given. Okay. Now, <coughs> We all know what is the mean mean of y, expected value of y, which is nothing but mu. Then, if I want to know what is the mean of z, so what you write? Expected value of z. That means expected value of z is nothing but y minus mu y sigma. Now, sigma is constant. So, it will come out. Okay. Then, 
expected value of mu uh, y minus mu. So, 1 by sigma now expected value of a my x minus y is expected value of x minus expected value of y. So, expected value of this will be expected value of y minus expected value of mu. So, what is expected value of y? 1 by sigma will be there, expected value of y is mu and mu is constant, this also mu, so it is 0. So, what happened then? The mean of z is 0. Okay. So, mean of z is 0. So, yours in standard variable, it follows, it will follow normal distribution because earlier also normal. So, with mean 0. Now, what will be the variance part? Now, what is your what is your um, variance value? Suppose if I say variance uh, of y equal to sigma square, but you want variance of z. So, that means this is nothing but your variance of y minus mu by sigma. Now, this is a constant one. So, it will be 1 by sigma square variance of y minus mu. Okay. Variance of 1 minus mu and variance of 1 minus mu you will find out this is nothing but sigma square again. So, what you will, you, you will do because you, you will find out because variance of mu will be sigma 0. So, that become will 0. So, this will be 1 by sigma square into sigma square it will be 1. Okay. So, now whether mu is mu 1 and sigma is sigma 1 it is irrespective of mu and sigma value when you standardize. So, all those processes earlier here what happened all those things it is standardized to only 0 1 that means, I have only one graph. I have one density function I have z equal to 0 and this is my thing this side and that mean I can write 1 sigma 1 sigma is nothing but minus 1 this side plus 1 this side reason sigma is 1 then this 68 percent data will fall within this then similarly your 2 sigma minus 2 this side minus 2. So, here 95 percent approximately will fall then 3 sigma plus 3 plus 3 minus 3 and this is the k area 99.73 percent will fall. So, what happened you have different original dis normal distribution but all can be can be converted to unit normal and this distribution itself is sufficient to 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 explain behavior of this behavior of this behavior of this so if i this is what is your standard normal distribution standard normal distribution means it's an it's a unit normal distribution why unit it expected value is 0 and standard deviation is 1. And this why it is standardized? Because this is a distribution which can be normal distribution which can be used for any normal population. When it is normally distributed whether mean is 50 standard deviation 20 or mean 100 standard deviation 5. So, that can be converted to unit normal and this distribution will be used. And because of this not standard normal distribution availability of standard normal distribution, you are also able ha having another advantage there is you know, from this a general standard normal table is standard normal table is created. Otherwise, if you consider in the original scale without standardize the data, then how many normal test table is required for every mu and standard deviation combination? One table. So, billion infinite number of tables required. But here, because of the standard, one table is required because every normal variable can be converted to standard normal. 
then using standard normal table you will be able to know what is the probability of happening not happening or happening less than right right to that all those things okay fine so let us see the use of standard normal distribution assume that the observation of in intensity level of radar scope using filter type 1 follow a normal distribution with mean 98 and variance of 60 it is basically by variance we are talking about the standard deviation of 6, six okay variance 60 okay fine we have to use variance 60 so we have not used the unit we have not used the unit so but anyhow in some units what is the probability that the value of intensity level exceeds 100 okay so what is given then if a process where basically observing through radar scope the target this is the process you are coming and observing and at certain uh, intensity level only you will be able to see the target okay so now this is we are saying normally distributed with mean uh, intensity level 98 and variance 60 suppose then if i want to know what is the pdf for this if y is the response variable then this is nothing but 1 by root over 2 pi sigma square is 60 into 60 e to the power half y minus mu is 98 by sigma is 60 d square this is the pdf for this process so you can summarize the, what i can say you write down 120 and this some value will come and ultimately this exponent this will be there and maybe your distribution normal distribution suppose if it is like this where this one is nothing but 98 and if i go to 1 sigma that root 60 means how much root 60 means 7 point something 7 point suppose 7 5 let it be so then 1 sigma means 98 minus 7.75 this side 98 plus 7.75 then 2 sigma like this this is my 1 sigma then 2 sigma 98 minus 2 into this like this 68 percent will fall under this what is my question question is what is the probability that the value of the intensity level exceeds 100 exceeds 100 value of the intensity level does not exceed 100 that is what we are interested not exceed 100 does not exceed 100 that is what I want ok. So, that means if it is 98 somewhere here is 100 is there please do not do not think that the top one uh, what I mean to say the top one is important uh, top one means what I mean to say that not this vertical axis we are talking about this value only suppose this is 100 ok. So, there can be two possibilities suppose if you say that what is the probability that the y value exceed 100 means you are interested to know the probability of this side this side. Suppose, suppose some I, I, as I told you that my in interest is to know what is the probability that a y value does not exceed 100 then probability this this side the area under this curve that means what happened here that means your ok let us start with this suppose probability that y value does not exceed 100 you want to know it or maybe another one probab probability that y exceed 100. So, let us do this one first then what you do you have to use a table and a normal uh, standard normal table which is available. So, you convert this to z so that mean if I want this in terms of z this is nothing but probability that z less than equal to y minus mu y sigma or here it will be probability that z greater than y minus mu by sigma. 
So, what is y value here? This y value is probability z less than or equal to y is 100. What is your mean value? Mu value is 98. What is the sigma value? Root over 60. And this value, this value will ultimately comes like this p z less than equal to 0 0.26. So, there is normal distribution table uh, I will show you in uh, in the class of sam sampling distribution time normal table. So, they are the probability z values z values with probabilities will be given. Now, for this z value suppose this is 0 0.26 what is the probability value it will be it you can get from the table and that value is 0 0.60. So, that means, this side, this side the the green green color shaded area, the green color shaded area, this side, this value is um, 0 0.6. That means, the probability that the intensity level in the in the experiment intensity level will be 100 or less is this. Then, what will be this? This will be the total is 100. So, this is nothing but 1 minus probability z less than equal to y minus mu by sigma. So, that means 1 minus 0 0.6026, this is nothing but 4, 7, 9, 3. So, red colored area, this is point, point 0.3974. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is the use of uh, unit normal. You are bringing to unit normal, first converting the original normal to unit normal, then from unit normal you are getting z value, there will be normal table, there will be normal table and using the normal distribution table, once you know the z value, you will be having the probability value. Other hand, if you have the probability value, you can get also z value how to see normal table is very important and you, you all must practice that how to read normal unit normal table as such other not table also you must require to know. Okay. But fine this is fantastic where so long your data is coming from normal normal distribution. But you do you you are assuming that they, that it is normal. But what is the guarantee that things are normal or population is normal? So as you don't know have completed if you have some earlier experience that you know that the data coming from the normal the population is normal, fine. But if you do not know that whether the population is normal or not, so in that case when you do take some sample. As such, you do some experiment, and from that experimental data, you can very easily do some plotting or some kind of quantitative study also, through which you can say that whether uh, my population is normal or not normal. Okay, so we'll see such plot. I'll I'll show you two plot, two different plots. One is PP plot, that is probability probability plot. Another one is QQ plot that is quantile quantile plot. Okay. So, in PPT PP plot when you have data from y 1 to y n what you do you arrange them in ascending order in ascending order you arrange them and then what have happened i 1 to like i to n these are the data points and your ascending data ordered data y 2 y i y n fine and this side you write down i minus 0 0.5 by n. So, here it will be 0 0.1 minus 0 0.5 by n means if n equal to 24 in our case then 24. So, like this you will get some probability some percentage values you will get. These are nothing but this is nothing but cumulative probability cumulative probability value or percentage probability values. Okay. So, once you get this one, if you plot this with this order uh, that order, 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 order observations means this side 
your y which is minimum to maximum order 1 and this side if you plot this i minus 0 0.5 by n okay. and if you get a straight line kind if you plot suppose plot is like this. So, but if you draw them it is resembling a straight line then your data is coming from normal probability distribution other than their population is normal. Okay. Sometimes instead of i if you if I use it is j then I will write here j minus these are all notation only. So, y j like this. Okay. So, let me let me read out here arrange data points in ascending order first one and then plot the order observation against its observed frequency uh, or cumulative frequency. Okay. So, I I want to use the slides. Okay. So, now with the given example you see what we have done and then here we are showing the probability plot this is a normal probability that normal probability paper you have to use this side the percentage which is nothing but i minus 0 0.5 by n or j minus 0 0.5 by n this side and this axis is the y values and we have used mini tab and that is why uh, we got this kind of now you see the middle one middle one is nothing but the what is the line joining them this is a straight line kind of things. So, we assume that it is probably normally distributed data come from normal population, but there are two other line this side this slightly slanted line curve line these are nothing but the 95 percent confidence interval of the uh, of, uh, of the day of this data. Anyhow those confidence interval part you do not know now, but later on you will be able to understand this confidence interval this is one. What is q q plot? In q q plot you do all those things this first this one this one and this three you do. So, instead of plotting like this uh, y versus this cumulative probability what you do you find out the z value means uh, suppose if this is 0 0.005 then what is the z value corresponding to this probability. Suppose it is z 1 then it is z 2 so like this it is z n this z value. So, what you do you basically plot z versus y this is also quantile in terms of z and this is the quantile in terms of y both quantile quantile means when you divide the data into uh, n segments every segment is a con this is known as quantile. So, one segment one quantile like this. So, similarly z is here n data points these are split into n quantiles here also we found out the corresponding z and you have you have also split into n quantiles then this quantile this quantile means this one first one this one is compared with this you have made a plot and this plot also will will be a uh, will, will, will resemble a um, straight line. So, let us see this that this q plot and see for this data set what happened this y part remains same this part also remains same. So, from this we found out the z value what is this minus 2.03 minus 2.03 means suppose if I go to z norm z this is 0 somewhere here minus 2.03. So, the probability value is 0 0.02 that means, if it is z normal. So, this portion this side this value is 0 0.02. So, similarly next probability is 0 0.06 left hand side 0 0.06. So, 0 0.06 and you found out the z 2 value. So, like this you know the probability get the corresponding z value and this z value using excel that norm inverse we found out this 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 value. Now, this y versus z other way you can z versus y this is y observation z observation plot and you see that when I join all the points it is almost resembling a straight line. So, we can say the data coming from a normal distribution or I can say the population considered is normal population. Okay. So, I hope uh, that you have understood this fully. So, today what are the what are the take home for you that what is normal distribution 
how to denote normal distribution, what is the PDF for normal distribution, how to read a PDF of a normal distribution, what is standardized normal or unit normal, unit normal and then how to read unit normal table, unit normal table and although I have not shown you any table, but I hope that you will be able to find it, other, I will show you in next class, next to next probably. And then, then uh, example or use of unit normal table. Now, as you assume that the population is normal, suppose you have some data may be from the experiment. So, using that experimental data, can I say the population is normal or not, then the PPP, PP plot and QQ plot, QQ plot is told to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, I acknowledge the references. Please see the references, design analysis experiment by Montgomery, again Montgomery statistics and multivariate lecture of mine. Okay. I, I, thanks a lot. See you next class.